Today I'm going to show you the best way to make a lens flare in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is all about lens flares. I'm going to show you guys when it's actually appropriate to put a lens flare in your photo because I see a ton of photos where it's just not appropriate, not happening guys. So we're going to go over that first and then I'm going to show you guys some really cool tricks in Photoshop that you can actually use to get a lot more features and control out of your lens flares. All right, so here's our image for today. It's a perfect candidate for a lens flare because we have the majority of the light coming from behind our subject. Now, if you are gonna be adding a lens flare to your image, it's super important that you actually know which direction the light is coming from. So I'm gonna draw you a beautiful diagram real quick here. Um, pardon my drawing skills. Try not to be too impressed. All right, there's a camera. This is a top view, by the way. And here we have our subject. There's the nose and their shoulders. So you're taking a picture of them just like that. Now, anytime you have a light that's behind or just to the side of your subject, anywhere from about here to about here, we'll get a little arrow there. This is where your lights are going to be shining in this direction, which is called a backlight because it's coming from behind the subject. So every time you're talking about like a front light or a backlight or a side light, that's in terms of your subject, not the camera. So a backlight basically lights the back of the subject. But what happens there is light actually is going to come in straight into the lens and it's going to bounce around in there and it's going to cause a lens flare. So that's what the actual flare comes from. Now, if the main light source is not coming from this direction, if the main light source is coming from this direction, you are not going to get a lens flare. So how do you actually tell? Well, you can look at your subject for the most part. If they have light behind them, then it's a backlit image. If all the light is coming from in front of them, then it's not a backlit image and you cannot add a lens flare to your image because it won't make any sense and it'll look really silly. So what does that look like in real image terms? So here we're talking about our backlight. See how these lights are both behind our subject? And you can see how she's lit from behind. You can see it here in her hair. She's got a nice line of light right around her arm. So those are behind her. Now there is another light in front of her as well that's actually lighting her face, but we're not gonna put a lens flare on that light. We're gonna pay attention to the lights that are actually behind our subject. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new layer. I wanna actually create a lens flare in Photoshop. So I'm gonna create a new layer. We're gonna go to filter, down here to render, and I'm gonna go down to lens flare. And it's gonna say, no, you can't do that because there's nothing on that layer. And I'm gonna say, that's silly Photoshop. Why can't I just do this on a blank layer? You can't. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna make what's called a stamp visible layer. It's basically a copy of everything you see. So the keyboard shortcut is shift, option, command, E, and that's actually gonna make a stamp visible layer. So now on this layer, which is basically just a duplicate of your entire image, now we can go to filter, down here to render, and over here to lens flare. Okay, and you'll see a cool little dialog box and you can just click here and actually like move your lens for flare around. Now it makes sense to have your lens flare over top of your light source. So I could put one right over here or I could put one right over here. Over here makes absolutely no sense. Please don't do that. Okay, so there we go. You can choose your different lens type if you want, just create a couple different looks. All right, and then you can choose your intensity. Keep away from that. It just doesn't look good at all. There we go. Let's try that and hit okay. Okay, that looks pretty good, but it looks a little bit fake. Looks like it was done in Photoshop. Let's try to move that around. So I'm gonna grab my move tool and try moving it around. But what you're gonna see is that it's actually tied to this layer. It's a part of the layer, which personally I don't like. I don't like the option that I can't change the look of it, maybe change the color, change the opacity. So there's a really cool trick we can use to actually separate the lens flare from the image. Here's what we do. We take the same layer, I'm gonna hit shift delete and we're gonna fill the entire layer now with black. Let's hit okay. So it's just a black layer. Now we're gonna go to filter and I'm gonna go down, to, instead of going down to render and down to lens flare, I'm gonna go to this lens flare. And this is basically repeating the exact same thing that I just did. So let's click on that lens flare. It's gonna put it in the same place, the same settings and everything like that. Now, all I need to do is change the blending mode of my layer from normal, we're gonna go down to screen. That makes blacks completely disappear and now we have lens flare on its own layer that we can turn off and on. If I use my move tool, I can actually move my lens flare around as well. I could put it over there if I wanted to. 
All right, the coolest part about this, I think, is that we can adjust the color. Let's say I want to change this color a little bit. I'm going to hit Command U, which brings up our hue slash saturation. And I'm just going to adjust my hue, maybe give it a little bit of a bluish color. Kind of like actually go with my image. Yeah, that kind of teal. That's cool. So we can see I just changed the color of my actual lens flare. And you know what? These things, they look good, but they need a little bit of blur on them as well. So I'm going to click on this layer, and we're just going to give it a Gaussian blur just a little bit. So it actually, there we go, looks a little bit more realistic. Doesn't, we don't want it to be super sharp. And there we go. We've got a lens flare, but it's not totally fake. All right, let's do the whole thing over again on the other side so you can get a good recap of it. So we're going to create a new layer, a stamp visible layer, shift option command E. Now we're going to go to filter, render. I don't want to go to this lens, you know, well, it's not even there because this is basically shows you the last filter that you did. And in this case, the last filter that I did was Gaussian blur. So I can't do it anyway. So we're going to go to this lens flare, filter, render, lens flare. And now we're going to choose way over here and we're going to click on that one. Okay. Hit OK. Now, remember the next step is to fill your entire layer with black. So shift delete, go to black and hit OK. And next go to filter and then down to lens flare. So it's an extra step but it'll help you get those lens flares on their own layer. Okay, now I could change, let's say I wanted to change the opacity of that, I can do that after the fact, and let's give it a little bit of a blur as well. So now, let's go ahead and take a look at what our image looks like with and without those lens flares. Here's the before, super clean, and here's the after with some lens flares, but they're not completely obnoxious because we were able to alter them after we made them in Photoshop. And that's the end of today's episode, guys. Just remember the two most important things when using a lens flare. First is make sure to pay attention to the direction of the light. If you're working with a backlit image, it's okay to use the lens flare. If you're not, it's not time to use lens flare. And second, after you create a lens flare, fill that layer with black, redo the lens flare, and then change your blending mode to screen. And that's gonna allow you to get the lens flare on its own layer, which gives you a ton of options when you're actually editing. I didn't know what I was going to say there. I just, sometimes you just keep talking and it just, it just comes out. Anyway, thanks for watching today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning from Flurn. And if you want to continue learning from Flurn, all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's free and we send out photography and Photoshop tutorials every single week. And if you have an idea for a new episode or something, a question about today's episode, leave it in a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flurn you later. Bye, everyone. All right, so the keyboard shortcut is shift, is shift option command E. And that's going to make a stamp visible So the keyboard, all right, so now we need to make a stamp visible layer. The keyboard shortcut is shift option command E. <coughs> all right, is, it's actually, you know, it's on there, but I'm going <coughs> to, I'm going to record some bloopers. Molto bello, tre bien. And that's what I call a lens flare done right in Photoshop. Um, Moto Gucci, Cherry Bells.